So welcome to TechSoup's Public Good App House demo event, Apps for Community-Based Fundraising. Cultural, religious, and marginalized communities have a tremendous amount of fundraising potential that is waiting to be unlocked. But how can your nonprofit reach these groups and encourage them to give? Join us for an introduction to three giving apps that work closely with their community to raise more money. The presenters will share the lessons they've learned growing crowdfunding campaigns and provide tips for how your own nonprofit can raise more money with your own community, building on its unique and authentic local voice and diversity. So this Public Good App House demo event will open with a special opening presentation from Giving Tuesday's Lexa Wilson. Public Good App House events like this are an initiative of TechSoup's Caravan Studios. Caravan Studios works closely with nonprofits, communities, and local organizations, such as libraries, to design technical technology solutions to help nonprofits address some of their most pressing problems. Now, before we get into today's content, I want to welcome you to the TechSoup Global Network, especially for those that are new here. At TechSoup, we believe that technology like smartphones, internet connectivity, training, and more have the power to serve our communities better. And today's speakers with their Tech for Good app demos will give you a good taste of for what that looks like in action. I also wanted to share a little bit about TechSoup's newest initiative, Quad. We know the massive effort it takes to keep your organization running, from managing volunteers and schedules to communicating with funders and donors, all while keeping your digital data secure. And you're not alone. Quad members get personal needs assessments where you can tell us how we can best help you and you can make sure that we're getting that you're getting the most from your membership. Dedicated member support over phone, chat, or email, reduced admin fees for products and services available in the TechSoup catalog, unlimited access to the entire TechSoup courses catalog to help you navigate technologies and trends that are shaping your world. Quad is available for $200 a year, and there's a link that will be put in chat if anyone's interested. So I wanted to introduce my colleague, Laura Ross Perry, who will share TechSoup's approach to equity, inclusion, diversity, and culture. Laura is a program development manager for TechSoup's global network of nonprofit partners, as well as a lead and collaborator on the Equity, Inclusion, Diversity, and Culture program. She has a background in international development and ICT4 development and a deep interest in exploring the intersections of civil society, social impact, technology, and digital development, and global equity. So thank you for joining us today, Laura. Thanks so much, Bailey. Hi, everybody. And it's an honor to be able to join you today and get to share a little bit about TechSoup's approach to equity, inclusion, diversity, and culture. So TechSoup actually had a pretty organic start to our program. It is in its relatively nascent years. We started in October 2019, and this was from a staff built development of a global global diversity awareness month. So we just had some passionate staff members who decided let's do some programming around global diversity awareness. From October 2019 till now, we were able to formalize an official program, and we actually have a full time director now leading all of our equity initiatives. So our program, I'm sure many of you have similar programs and you've heard a lot of different acronyms like DEI, JEDI, for example. Ours is personally Equity, Inclusion, Diversity, and Culture, EIDC. And it's we did this intentionally because we believe that equity ensures inclusion, which brings meaning to diversity, and then that builds culture. So it's really important for us to have those four different terms. Another important piece of this for us is that we really build equity into absolutely everything we do at TechSoup. It's a foundation for us, a foundation for all of our programs and all of our interactions with staff. So you can see on the left-hand side, we have built our program into three different pillars. So we wanted to make it, we wanted to be very intentional about not just focusing our equity work internally on staff, but also with all of our stakeholders and in our community. So we have different pillars that we focus this work on. We have our organization, that's all of our policies, everything that goes into what builds our culture at TechSoup, ensuring that people feel like they belong and are included and heard, and also developing a inclusive workforce. Then we have our network, which is all of the partners that we engage with, all of the vendors that we work with, the foundations we work with, all of our corporate partners, ensuring we share similar values and that we build equity into the programs that are that incorporate these partners. And then taking a step back out, we also have our community. So that's the larger ecosystem of civil society, which TechSoup is a part of. And we want to make sure that we are leaders of equity, inclusion, diversity, and culture in that space, and also continuously learning from others in the community as well. So all of our programming fits into these three pillars. 
The way that we do our work is through a very small but dedicated team at TechSoup, but also through a lot of staff involvement and impact. So one of the ways that we do that is through a bridge program. And bridge, we love acronyms here, you can see. Bridge stands for belonging, respect, inclusion, diversity, and global equity. And it's essentially a formalized diversity council of cross-functional employees. We collaborate, identify, discuss, and think of ways to promote and maintain an inclusive culture. So there's a lot of event programming and different activities that come through the bridge program and a lot of business initiatives that can be leveraged through bridge as well. And then finally, we have recently formalized an affinity group program. So we have four different formal affinity groups now, which is super exciting. We have black allies, we have alphabet soup, which is our L LGBTQ plus and allies affinity group. We have a racial justice allyship group and also one specifically for junior professionals. And these, if you don't know what affinity groups are, these are places for community members within TechSoup who identify with different affinities or different interests can come together, have a safe space to discuss, share, do programming and events, but also likewise to bridge, have ways to leverage their expertise for different business initiatives in the organization. So all of these are different ways that we are really trying to weave equity into the fabric of everything that we do. So just wanted to share a little bit about that. And finally, we have a couple of different blog posts we've put together on our EIDC program. So we have Equity in Action, which is based on a webinar that our director, Lashika, who cannot be with us today, that she facilitated, as well as a blog post on the power of affinity groups. So talking a little bit about what they are, what they've done, what we've been able to do with them at TechSoup, and how you could grow them at your own organization. And finally, please reach out to us if you have anything to share. We would love to learn from you. We would love to be able to share what we have experienced and continue to grow more types of programs like these at organizations and companies around the globe. EIDC at TechSoup.org. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. So this event is presented in partnership with Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is a global generosity movement unleashing the power of radical generosity. Giving Tuesday was created in 2012 as a simple idea, a day that encourages people to do good. Since then, it has grown into a year-round global movement that inspires hundreds of millions of people to give, collaborate, and celebrate generosity. Join the movement and give each Tuesday and every day, whether it's some of your time, a donation, or the power of your voice in your local community. I'm delighted to welcome Giving Tuesday's Lexa Wilson to open the event. Lexa works with organizations to bring data and technology initiatives for the public and social sectors to life, coordinating with knowledge management experts, data scientists, developers, and fellow research enthusiasts. She supports efforts to break down barriers to data sharing and collaborative social research initiatives. Thanks for joining us today, Lexa. Hi, thank you so much to TechSoup. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. I like as I was just introduced, I'm Lexa. I help manage data and analytics projects within the Giving Tuesday Data Commons team, which I'll mention a little bit more about in a second. But I'm here excited to announce that it is 12 days until Giving Tuesday. And I know some of you have campaigns planned. I know some of you are just curious to, to see what happens on Giving Tuesday. So I'm going to take for those of you who are just learning about us, what the opportunities are, what kind of work we do, I'll take a few minutes to give an overview of the movement and especially touch on why we're excited about the platforms here today. Yes, as mentioned, Giving Tuesday was created in 2012 based on the idea that generosity deserves its own day. And over the years, it has grown into a global movement that we believe inspires people to give, to collaborate, and to celebrate all types of generosity. Uh, we are currently present in over 80 countries, each of which have numerous different campaigns and activities going on Giving Tuesday and year-round. And we like to attribute that success uh, to this we to the fact that we've adhered to this core principle that this movement is entirely intended to be co-opted and adapted to any given group's needs. We encourage folks to take it somewhere new and to adopt Giving Tuesday in an authentic way and 
to innovate and do whatever they want to do with it in order to grow generosity locally. So as I mentioned, a major piece of Giving Tuesday is the data commons. That's the area that I'm most in, which is for those of you who don't know, we bring together different actors in the social sector, researchers, social enterprise, platforms, nonprofits, foundations, policymakers, in order to find out what they need. How can we bridge practitioners with researchers? How can we increase the value of the data that we're all generating so that we can provide real insights for, for all the different members of the social sector? So this work is done in collaboration with a whole bunch of partners who are willing to share their data with us, share their methodologies, share their needs. And we're so excited that a lot of those, the, a lot of those here today are our partners of ours who share data around their around their Giving Tuesday campaigns. And so together we're able to generate insights about Giving Tuesday and its power as a giving day, but well beyond that as well. So last year we were able, thanks to those who do share data with us, we were able to find out that $2.7 billion were donated to social good in the US alone in the 24 hours that span Giving Tuesday. Um, but we always like to highlight that it's not just a day about giving money. There is so many other ways that people express their generosity on Giving Tuesday and every day. So it's always interesting for us to make sure that all of those different types of generosity activities are being highlighted and that they're being leveraged as well. Next. This is just another testament to the opportunity that Giving Tuesday presents. Donations are on Giving Tuesday are growing faster than consumer spending on days like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So there is so much opportunity here to take advantage of people's innate desire to be generous and to leverage that for your own movement's needs or your own community's needs. A few more things just to mention about Giving Tuesday, what we've been able to learn about it. 82% of organizations that participate say that they use it to experiment and try something new. And we love that. We really encourage people to take this opportunity to do something that they wouldn't have done before or to try something and measure the results of it and see how they can integrate those results into their activities later. We know that 80% of those who have heard of Giving Tuesday say that they are inspired to, to do something generous because of that day. That's incredible to us. And that's something that we, to demonstrate, to say, hey, take advantage of these people who are excited, ready to do something on this day and then beyond as well. And another thing to highlight is just people to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. And we see that as well in how they report about feeling like they're part of a bigger movement. So definitely, this is no surprise, right? People find joy in giving. So make sure to, we like to encourage people to include joy in everything that they're doing and everything that they're promoting. But at the core of everything that we do at Giving Tuesday is our communities. So much of what we do is driven by what we learn from them. They are the ones who are showing us how to address equity, justice, empathy, and more through generosity. And the we, we are in the number of communities that we have is it's constantly growing, which is so exciting for us because that means we get more feedback about what's needed. We get more feedback about what it, the kind of interesting and innovative ways that they are addressing the topics that are most challenging in their area of expertise or their geographical area. Just want to show the kind of different communities that we have. So you see the squares. These are the types of geographical communities that, that we work closely with. But we also have causes or identity-based communities. And these are the ones that we're so excited about growing and supporting even more. Because what we've seen is that... Having these approaches, having communities that built that create these coalitions around certain causes, allow those causes to be addressed by people who are who are involved in them. It's led by them, for them, and that's what's so exciting about the platforms that are here today. They are helping build community and inclusion. They are driving change that has to be led by people who are informed of the needs and who are served by that work. So. Finally, the last thing that I'll mention is that the, at the core of our work, what Giving Tuesday is 
trying to achieve as, excuse me, as an organization is to reimagine a world that's based on radical generosity, which is this notion that someone else's suffering should be as intolerable as our own suffering. And so we believe that if people flex their generosity muscles regularly, we can create a habit out of giving and that they'll be more inclined to, to participate in all kinds of other pro-social behavior. So if there's one thing I want to leave you with, it's just that Giving Tuesday is an opportunity, is a movement that gives us an opportunity to build the world that we're imagining. And especially through the support and the, and the expertise of the platforms that are here today and who are funneling re resources to communities that often don't have them or ha aren't prioritized otherwise. And so we're so excited about that. Thank you. Thank you, Lexa. With us today, we have Heather Infantry, Senior Director of Strategic Partnerships for Giving Gap, Junith Mihija, Deputy Director of Philanthropy and Innovation for Hispanics in Philanthropy, and Chris Blavelt, founder of launchgood.com. So let's thank them for being here with us today. And now I welcome Heather Infantry, Senior Director of Strategic Partnerships for Giving Gap. Heather is the founder of the Atlanta Task Force for Philanthropic Reparations, created in response to her public call out of the Community Foundation for Greater Atlanta's exclusion of Black arts organizations and COVID relief funding, resulting in an unprecedented contribution of $1.4 million to 33 Black organizations. Heather was also the managing director for the Transformation Alliance, a collective advancing equitable transit-oriented development as a pathway to Black prosperity. Prior to this position, Heather served as the executive director of Generator, retro futurist Beltline Social House, whose mission is to bring together people to generate ideas that shape the future of cities. Thank you for joining us, Heather. Thank you, Bailey, and thank you everyone for tuning in today and to my fellow panelists. It's great to be able to come online here and share with you my passion and the mission of Giving Gap. So with that, I'll just get into it by first stating that Giving Gap exists to advance racial equity in giving and to mobilize positive action in support of Black lives by connecting people to causes that they care about most. And with that, we'll get into it. So only a tiny fraction of the $450 billion that's given out to charities each year support Black organizations. We have found even in cities where there is a significant Black population that grant making typically disproportionately is denying access to Black organizations to do the work that they see fit in their communities. There's a really interesting report that came out during the pandemic from the National Committee for Responsive Philanthropy entitled Black Funding Denied that looked at the grant making practices of community foundations in the Southeast and across the country, really speaking to this gap in funding that's happening. Conversely, Bridgespan Group did a report called Four Pathways to Greater Giving, where they were surveying some of the country's ultra wealthy donors that have signed the US Giving Pledge and found that almost 60% of them reference economic mobility as a funding priority, but they don't have access to a particular platform or mechanism in which they can identify and make contributions in those areas. So there's this gap between one, the visibility of these organizations and donors that have an interest in being able to connect to this kind of work. So following the social uprising during the global pandemic, our founders of Giving Gap created a spreadsheet of black founded nonprofit organizations that they were aware of to generate donor interest in very much the same way folks were being called to support black businesses. And so they wanted to do it in the nonprofit philanthropic space. That spreadsheet is has become what is Giving Gap's platform today, which now has upwards of 2,000 organizations and growing every day with the express purpose of raising visibility of these groups and providing a very simple, easy way for folks to find and support them. The premise for the platform is also based on the notion that philanthropic support of Black organizations in particular is a critical piece to tackling systemic racism. Black organizations are most likely to be grounded in the needs of Black communities, they have missions that are connected to positive action for Black lives, they employ Black people, and they empower Black leaders. So this is the demo portion of my presentation. What you're looking at now is the homepage of the Giving Gap website platform, which you can access by going to givinggap.org. And immediately on the front page, there are links that take you to the various organizations that are in our database. 
So one of the ways in which you can identify groups that are in our database is either graphically or by uh, category of area in which these organizations are doing their work. So for example, we have highlighted here food justice and hunger prevention. That's a link that would take you to all the organizations that we have registered under that category. I just wanna note at the time that we had prepared this presentation and shared this screenshot, we had created some curated lists around the Jackson water crisis, which is something that we'll do from time to time if there's a particular social issue that comes up and making it really easy for donors that are coming onto the platform to be able to reference those organizations working in those areas. Again, as I mentioned, one of the other ways in which you can filter through the organizations on our platform is by geography, by states. And we're looking to build this out further as we continue to refine and amplify different filters and categories of the database where you might be able to search by municipality and that sort of thing. But currently what you can do is look by state. So if you click on one of these states and it will pull up all the causes that are within that state. This is a sample view. If you were to click on New York, this shows all of the organizations. This shows a portion view of all the organizations in the state of New York. And what you'll see here is not only the name of the organization, the city that they're located within that state. We provide a short little descriptor or mission statement associated with that organization and then a link for you to donate. So you would click on donating for New York Laughs, for example, and you have the option here through our partnership with PayPal Giving Fund to administer a donation through PayPal. For those organizations that aren't registered with PayPal, that is a step that they have to do. That's a separate relationship where organizations will have to be registered through the PayPal Giving Fund in order to accept donations through that platform. And so for those organizations on our platform that, that don't have that affiliation, then what we do is we provide a direct link to their organization where users and interested donors, supporters can make a donation through that means. Here, we're highlighting here in the top right hand corner where you will access the navigation tool there for submitting a nonprofit organization to be included in the database, which is one of our big calls to actions for the folks that are on this Zoom today. If you are a Black identifying organization that is founded and led by a person of African descent, then we invite you to be part of our platform and to have your information included in the database. And of course, our second call to action, most important one, is to support a Black organization doing work in the community. Ultimately, Giving Gap is seeking to galvanize 1 million supporters to donate $1 billion by 2030. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. That was really cool. And next, we have Junith Mejia. And Junith is the Deputy Director of Philanthropy and Innovation for Hispanics in Philanthropy. She's a digital philanthropy trailblazer in Mexico slash Latin America and is head of strategy and operations in HipGive, Hispanic in philanthropy's digital platform. She leverages investment and develops innovative technology to help hundreds of nonprofits from across the Americas to advance their work through crowdfunding campaigns. Having spearheaded the recent integrations of peer-to-peer -peer giving and digital giving circles, Junith is leading the way in creating the largest digital community for social good and 21st century philanthropy. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Rayleigh. And as Rayleigh says, my name is Junoid Mejia. I am the head of HipGip, which is Hispanic in Philanthropy Digital Platform, which is focusing on advancing Latinx social impact projects from nonprofits and promoting philanthropy across America since 2014. Please. Thank you. And since 2014, we saw a couple of reasons why we needed to create this platform. We saw a lack of underinvestments in which Latinx communities receive less than 6% of all international grant dollars from U.S. foundations go toward Latin America, and less than 1% of U.S. foundation fundings go to Latinx serving nonprofits in the U.S., we as well uh, saw a lack of bilingual giving infrastructure for Spanish speaking communities and donors, and as well bilingual and free trainings for them. 
Uh, we saw as well the need to keep democratizing philanthropy, change the narrative of what philanthropy means, promote the spaces to show the power of collective giving and the Latinx culture of generosity. And last but not least, but we as well saw the lack of visibility for those grassroots organizations who were willing to find spaces to provide a impact and to share their voice as well. For us, it is about more than just the money. It's about changing attitudes toward giving, creating a community of people that believe in our cause, democratize philanthropy and inspire community involvement, and as well boost the capacity to innovate and stretch their resilience in the long term. So understanding the context of Latinos, not just in the US, but across the Americas, understand how technology and philanthropy is evolving so we could create the best channels and tools to create the spaces to engage, to connect, to donate, looking to boost philanthropy. We evolved in the last couple of years of being just a crowdfunding platform and being able to develop new features as peer-to-peer -peer giving, permanent digital campaigns, and digital giving circles. And to show you a quick demo of how you could get involved with HitGet, in order to create a crowdfunding campaign, you just have to click on register your organization, fill your personal information in order to create your profile, then we will ask you a couple of uh, basic information from your organization and ask you to upload your uh, IRS letter confirming you are a 501c3. And then it will show you all the different uh, things that we will need to create your campaign. General information about your crowdfunding project and all the content and description around your project in Spanish and English, a place in which you could upload uh, pictures or videos that illustrates uh, your campaign. And once uh, you are ready to go, you can request validation and less, in less than 48 hours, the team will reply back to you. While your campaign is going on, you are able to upload different updates about what's going on with your campaign. And as well, when it's finished, you can upload your results. While your campaign is running, you are always, we invite you to keep filling out all the information around your organization, legal information, and as well, banking information. So we are, when your campaign is finished, we are ready to send those funds out to your organization. And if you want to become a hip giver from a, to a project or to, if you want to donate to an organization, you only have to click and select within the over 500 projects that we have so far open on the platform. You can, you just need to click to give to this project, then select the amount you want to donate, fill your personal information and select your payment method. As we are legally registered in the US and in Mexico, you are able to ask for a tax exam receipt. And if you are looking forward to create a giving circle campaign, we will ask you to fill personal information around for you as a leader and as well basic information for your giving circle. From your giving circle profile, you will be able to send invitation for those potential members that you have already spoke with. You will be able to fill out all this general information about your giving circles. In the description, you will be able to show what's the purpose of being a member of the this giving circle and invite people to join. Illustrate as well with videos and pictures what is your giving circle looking forward to do. And once all the members agree that they are ready to send the funds to one or different nonprofits, you are able to click on the page to allocate the funds for those nonprofits. And as HIPGEV, we will take care of making and realizing all the compliance process for all those potential nonprofits and as well send the money uh, for those organizations. And you will be able to share as a, as many times as you want all the results that you have accomplished as a giving circle group. And if you want to become a giving circle member, you will just have to click on give, choose giving circles. And it could be two types of giving circles, ones that are open, that are, you are ready to go, that you just have to share much more about you, select uh, the amount you want to donate, if it's unique or if it's a recurring uh, membership, and you will then fill out your membership 
profile. But if it's a close giving circle, you will have to request to join. And the organization have already set a couple of organization if it's a good fit for you. So you will receive a, an answer for them if they accept you to join the giving circle. And once they accept, accept you, you will be able as well to create your profile and share it with much more people around this giving circle and invite them to join. Last but not least, we are inviting you to join us for our Latinx gift, which is our largest giving campaign in partnership with Giving Tuesday, where there is a space for all, for organizations, for individuals, and for foundations and corporate partners to join. And if you want to know much more about HipGive, follow us in social media. Next, we have Chris Blavelt. Chris is a passionate Muslim American entrepreneur committed to building up the global Muslim community to reach its full potential. Chris is the CEO and founder of LaunchGood.com, the world's largest faith-inspired crowdfunding platform, which has raised over $350 million across 152 countries from over a million users. Thanks for joining us today, Chris. Hey, thanks, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Cool. All right, really quick, I'll introduce LaunchGood and just talk about a little what we do. It's nice to hear Hip Give. We're like Hip Give, but for the Muslim community. And I'm one of three founders. I have a crazy background, so engineer, film producer, startups. There's also a brilliant young woman, Amani, that I work with, and a brilliant designer, Omar. And you know what's cool about us, and I think this is true for a lot of people here, like we didn't do this because we're MBAs and saw business opportunities. Like we're just community active the activists and we really believe in the cause and we just started this thing in our backyards and bootstrapped it and grew it to about 100 people and 350 million dollars raised for charities around the world um, and so if you don't know launch good you can basically think of it as like the muslim gofundme it's the the world's largest crowdfunding platform um, I, and i believe it might be the largest faith-based crowdfunding platform for, for anybody and uh, we do a lot of cool things to help charities with fundraising and giving tuesday is definitely a big part of it uh, so we're a donation-based platform. Everyone else sort of hip give that was going before us. I already mentioned we've crossed 350 million, over a million unique donors, almost 50,000 campaigns. I think what kind of makes us, is this is pretty standard. I'm not going to go over this because I think people here now, if you didn't know before with hip give and the other day, what crowdfunding is, we got some cool, there's some cool things that we do that I think I mean, you could do on launch but I think you can do it on a lot of different websites. One is leveraging trackable links. It's been a game changer for a lot of our fundraisers. And last year we had three charities on Giving Tuesday that each raised over a hundred thousand dollars. I think one of them like three hundred thousand dollars. And the common denominator is all three leveraged trackable links. And I can talk about that a little more, maybe on the Q&A. Extension of your team. You can add teammates and this even goes with the trackable links. It's really important that you don't do this alone, that you engage your community and you empower them and make sure that your campaign is really visually appealing and connects with people's hearts. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with the trackable links. So we set up this insights tab. You can probably do this in a lot of different ways. I'm sure there's ways you could do it with Google, Google insights, but this is just how it looks internally to us. And there's probably even bit.ly and some other things that you can use to do it. But within launch good, we have the ability that, and you can create any link. If you see here, for example, there's two users, one named Imran and one named Ali that referred four donors between them that drove in $127 in donations, for example. And we started this because there was a charity on Giving Tuesday like three years ago called Celebrate Mercy. And they had this idea of, and they're fantastic fundraisers. They're like, we want to really incentivize our donors and we're going to offer a free vacation for one donor and their family if they're able to drive 10 or more donations to our Giving Tuesday. And the, every set of 10 becomes like an extra raffle ticket. So they needed some tool to be able to see how many donations each of their donors drove. And so we built this tool for them actually. And they got, I don't know, maybe a hundred volunteers. And between those hundred volunteers, the average, each on average drove like 15 donors. So it was 1,500 donors in one day between all these volunteers. And that was a total of I think about $150,000 in donations. So it cost them a, a vacation. They had to pay like, I don't know, $5,000 or something as a giveaway to one of their volunteers. But for that, they got all this work was done on their behalf and it raised $150,000. So that was really effective fundraising strategy for Giving Tuesday. And now we're seeing every year the top charities implement this tool. 
There's some other things that we do unique to us, but it's all about gamification. So Launch Good, we offer a leaderboard. On Giving Tuesday, we give out, I don't know, it's like $100,000 in prizes. Whoever raises the most money or gets the most donors gets like $25,000. And it's very effective to motivating donors, actually. So, so this is something you, you don't have to be part of Launch Good to take advantage of the psychology of this. And you know what? I, I see it all the time, actually. If you can find a big donor... It could be an individual, it could be a foundation, it could be a a corporation that's willing to say, hey, if you can raise $50,000, I will match $50,000. Or for every dollar you raise, I will double it up to $10,000, something like that. Donors get so motivated. They really like just open up. And I've seen people like maybe their average donation is usually $10, $20. All of a sudden they give like $200. And I asked them like, why did you give so much? They're like, it was being doubled. So I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't avoid, I couldn't miss the opportunity. And uh, I think a lot of people here are probably f- familiar with Facebook's giveaway. I, this year, maybe 10 million. I, I can't remember if, what they announced, but I think it might be $10 million giveaway. The reality is that stuff's gone in a second. $10 million, like you're lucky if you get a hundred dollars of it, but it's still useful just to be able to tell your donors like, hey, Facebook's giving away $10 million and all we got to do is get donors and they'll match it. We just got to do it right away. And your donors will be really motivated. So a lot of fundraising is psychology, having fun with it, showing your donors you're having fun with it and making them feel like they can be part of the. This is related to team fundraising. So I, I think also Hipgood mentioned this, but peer-to-peer fundraising functionality, this is something similar. If you don't want to use trackable links or an alternative trackable links is you actually give everyone their own micro campaign. So instead of using links, it's like everyone creates a campaign. It's a little bit more work, but people tend to take it more seriously because if the campaign is in their name, it's not just, oh, I'm helping celebrate Mercy fundraise, but now it's Chris's fundraiser for Celebrate Mercy, I feel like my reputation is on the line. I can't hide. I don't want it to say zero dollars. No, I'm going to work harder. There's a lot of crowdfunding platforms that offer peer-to-peer functionality. It's very effective. Okay. So we've got lots of questions. So I think the first question that I want to start with is one for all of you. There's a lot of questions about the geography and location in which people can use your app. So number one is, is this available to folks in Canada or outside of the U S and then also U S territories. So I'll start with Heather. Yeah. Great question. So the organizations that we populate on their platform are explicitly based in the United States of America, including the territories. There aren't any organizations represented in the territories, but that is not an indication of our allegiance to them. It's just that we haven't had any submissions of organizations. And going forward, we're doing a more active outreach strategy to identify more Black-founded led organizations to be included on the platform. So we're definitely looking to build out the list of organizations that we have representing all 50 states plus territories. But if individuals are interested in supporting the organizations, that is open to everybody, regardless of where they are geographically located. Thank you, Heather. Gina, do you want to go next? Thank you. Yes. In the case of Kevin, yes, we are able to support Latinx projects or Latinx nonprofits, which are based in in Canada, in the U.S., and as well across the Americas. That's great. And Chris? Yeah. It's, so we do Giving Tuesday globally and you can imagine it's mostly an American thing. So we have a lot of charities who work with in the UK and stuff, and it's starting to become a thing now because of what we do and all the money we give away. And then, but we had to tweak it a little bit for some areas. So for Southeast Asia, we actually call it like, like they have their own leaderboard and own prizes because they can't really compete with the American and Western charities, but yeah, it's everywhere now. Thank you. There was a question in here that was answered already in chat, but I think that it's worth talking about it out loud. So just give me one moment here. Lizette asked for Junith, can you explain more about giving circles? Can you share a little bit more about giving circles? With- yes. As Mappy shared on the answer, it's like a digital giving circle. It's a group of people, which it could be friends, it could be college, who are joining because of an interest or a specific interest or an, a specific cause. And they wanted to do something, but they still don't don't have a specific a nonprofit. They just know like they have this specific thematic that they care about. So they join together, they research more and more about it. Like they 
as a group set a goal of what amount they have they want to donate to a specific cause as a group and they could find like those limits around hey we are going to donate individually I don't know like one thousand dollars and we are a group of 20 people so at the end we will have this amount so we will decide as a group which organizations we want to support one or it could be multiple. So it's an exercise of citizenship and participation and understanding much more about what are your community community needs and as well to get much more involved. We are providing all the technology to support you administratively. So we are able to do all the nonprofit background check, all the compliance, and as well disburse like all the different funds and support you with administering all those funds and provide you an online tool in which you are able to spread the word about what your group is willing to do and support. Thank you for that. Very helpful. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the question from Sandra for all presenters. How do the organizations that serve as clearing houses vet organizations that link to them? So I will start this time with Chris. Awesome. Could you just repeat that question one more time? Yeah. How do the organizations that serve as clearing houses vet organizations that link to them? Uh, it varies. Like sometimes it's super easy, right? And if it's a U.S. charity, you have access usually to their EIN and can look up all sorts of records. And those are the type of things we do. Um, if they're international organizations, it's a lot more work. And frankly, we have a whole compliance team. Thankfully, I'm not involved in that work because I find it a little boring. But yeah, there. That is really important part of the work we do. And there's all sorts of background checks that like, can get as advanced as doing background checks on e the individual like directors of the companies or the nonprofits. Heather. So <clears throat> currently the way that we vet organizations is as it relates to their nonprofit tax exempt status. So one must be a IRS designated 501c3 organization in order to qualify. We're already aware of some of the inequities of that because there are a number of community-based organizations that don't have that designation doing really incredible, important work. But as a starting point, that's where we are in our vetting process. So one, an organization must be designated as such and be in compliance, however that is defined by the IRS. And then of course, that the racial identity of the organization's founder and we are expanding that to also include the leader of the organization is of African descent. Thanks, Heather. I think that what you're touching on is just a really important reminder about the, in the natural like inequality when we're looking at 501c3 designation in the U.S. And I know that's one thing just here at TechSoup that we're constantly thinking about when we're looking at our programs and our eligibility. And I know that recently we just opened up to tribal libraries, which is like a really cool opportunity. I think that's something that's important for all of us to think about. Junith, what about you? Yeah, in our case, it's the same as Heather's case. Like, we will need to have a verified nonprofit with the status of a 501c3. And that the people that it's being served belongs to the Latinx community. Great. Thank you so much. There are a ton of questions in chat, and we'll be able to share these with the presenters today. And we can always follow up with some of these answers. So, thanks everyone for the active participation. So, while we're closing out, I wanted to see what is one thing that you all learned today from this presentation? Go ahead and share that in chat and I'll kind of read out a couple out loud just to see what the thing was that you all learned and found the most interesting from today's presentation. I'll wait for a bit because I know it takes a little bit. I know for me personally, it gives me a good opportunity to check out these platforms and see what's going on in my community around me and see if there's some new organizations I can look into to give to this Giving Tuesday. Yeah. Shreema says that she's looking forward to getting the slides and just loves learning about the general platforms that are available. Dixie mentioned matching money strategies. I think that's always a really important thing as well. Lizette mentioned that she's a new nonprofit and just, I think, just looking forward to engagement. And Pat mentioned that they liked learning about all the new platforms. Oh, was that engaging the Hispanic community in philanthropy specifically? That's great. Thank you for sharing all of these. Okay. So if you like what you saw today and want to support future demo events, and if you want to reach nonprofits curious about technology, you can consider being a sponsor for a future event. If interested, please contact Susan Tinby for more information at stinby at techsoup.org. 
And thank you again, especially to all the behind the scene producers and staff at TechSoup who made this event possible. Thank you again for joining us today. This is really valuable information. So I hope everyone has a good rest of their day and rest of the week.